still waiting on a bunch of parts to come in for this thing, but I have a bunch of little odds and ends projects I can work on while I'm waiting for that. I still need to get the stock exhaust off. That's not going to be any good for what we're doing. Uh, I had a few missing bolts that I replaced and put new ones in where they needed to go. I'm going to be converting this to crossover steering. So the stock steering gearbox needs to go. I'm also going to upgrade it to a Jeep JK, not JK, uh, XJ steering shaft. So I have universal joints instead of the sloppy makes a mess and doesn't steer well rag joint. Uh, the, the factory drag link is going to go. Part of my high steer kit is also going to be a springless kingpin cap. So I'm going to work on getting some of these little odds and ends pulled off, tidied up, ready to go, things like that while I'm waiting for parts to get here for the other projects and the other things that I need to get done. update had some things fight us but we got it figured out we've got our XJ steering column or steering shaft in uh, pinch bolt at the top goes right on the double D tube comes down uh, we had to heat the center section up here so the plastic retainers would melt out and that allowed us to uh, compress the shaft a little bit making it the correct length for on our truck and then this end is a splined with a flat key. Uh, this shaft is a direct bolt-in, so if your wheel is straight, your steering wheel is straight, and your wheels are straight ahead, everything should line up. You just literally take the old piece out, put the new piece in. While I was doing it, I went ahead and put in my two-wheel drive steering gearbox. Uh, next thing we're gonna do, is get our clamshells pulled off of the frame brackets here. So we're at the workbench. This is our passenger side clamshell mount. Now from the factory, they do a little quick press rivet right here and right here. All you do is drill those out from the back and it'll allow you to separate the two pieces of metal. And then your new motor mount goes right in there. Down in tight, so these are ready. 
guess the next thing to do, man, I really don't want to do this. It's kind of a pain, but the, the factory fuel line is not going to be sufficient for what we're doing. Uh, so we're going to remove the factory supply and return lines. And then after that, we're going to pull, I'm going to pull the factory exhaust off of this thing. So we'll have room to uh, sit the engine in and start hopefully mocking up our new exhaust and everything that goes with it. So, all right, everybody, we got a little update on progress here. So we got all of the factory fuel lines removed. We got all of the factory exhaust removed. Uh, I noticed that my four wheel drive indicator light wiring was broken, so I repaired that. Uh, my fuel sending unit wire was broken, I repaired that. So uh, the next step here, here's all the old stuff sitting out. It's in really good shape. Maybe I can find somebody that needs it and, and recover a little bit of my expenses on this project. But uh, the next step here, the UPS driver just came by and dropped off. I ordered new uh, urethane body mount bushings. So he just dropped those off. I'm going to get those installed while I have plenty of room to roll around underneath and work and reach my hands wherever they need to be and all that stuff. Uh, and then after that, the only thing, my, he also brought my parts for the transmission work that I need to do. So after that, I'll probably get started on the transmission. We got the, the front motor mounts replaced with our new urethane mounts. I just got done replacing the cab mounts with urethane mounts as well. The fronts and the rears here. So the next thing I'm going to do is pull the other half of the motor mounts off the diesel engine, the clamshells here. Pull the one off the driver's side and the one off the passenger side. They just mount with three 9 16th bolts. Uh, nothing crazy difficult, but I'm going to get those off, get them cleaned up, and then get those mounted onto the 6 liter. All right, I want to make sure that the clamshell fits over this motor mount here. I'm glad I did this. See, I read in some of the reviews that the metal part was too wide. And sure enough, it's about one width too wide. So I'll have to trim that up on that side. Um, I'm going to do it probably with a cutoff wheel just to try to not get it too hot and melt the urethane. But That'll keep me going for a couple minutes. I'll get that trimmed off. There we go. Now we got both motor mounts. All ready as far as frame side. So I'm going to get these cleaned off in the parts washer. And then we'll get them uh, bolted to the engine using the adapters that I bought. All right, guys. So I'm going to get my adapter plates bolted onto the engine here. I'm just gonna mount mine in the factory location. Like I said, I'm using the factory transmission. I'm gonna use the turbo 400 and the MP208. So I just want my bell housing to bolt up just like it would have from the factory so I don't have to do a bunch of cross members and other stuff. Got a lot done. We got our, our adapter plates and motor mounts installed on the engine. We got our urethane mounts put into the clamshells for the frame side. 
We got our urethane cab mounts installed. We've tidied up some wiring. We got our two wheel drive gearbox and our XJ steering shaft installed. I got a lot done today. Uh, the next thing I do is probably gonna be build this transmission to handle all the power I can throw at it. And outside of that, I'm gonna be waiting for parts until I can get on to the next step. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Maybe you learned something. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you can see all the progress and everything that's happening with this truck as we get closer and closer to having it back on the road again. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care.